I would like to give us a glance of how this system is used. I hope you can, you can see my screen, right? Can you all see yes, my screen? Yes, clearly. All right. So first of all, for you to use this, the next time you want to use it, we can actually install it on your phone and in your laptop. You have to visit healthstaff.org as written on the tax bar. So when you get to healthstaff.org, as a new user, and I'm talking about institution this time around, a new user can be pharmacy, it can be medical laboratory, and it can also be a hospital. So as a new user, when you come on board, what you do is to create account for your institution by clicking on register. And when you do that, you're going to see the institution registration. You click on that. So you go ahead and fill the form that will open on the screen now when you're onboarding. Remember, the first thing you do is to visit healthstaff.org, then click on regist registration, and you see institutional registration. Then you have the form that will open now. Now, and then whatever, like, uh, uh, the plastic may not have been the vein of all these things we are talking about. Finally, already, I will pay people the Chiara and Lua. Think that you will get a warrior who knows you. Hello. So, this is the registration form. If one is coming on board this system for the very first time. This is what you have for you to create an account for your pharmacy, for your pharmacy this time around. So once this account is created for your pharmacy, when you log into healthstaff.org and click on registration, then you're ready to log into your account. So, and I'm not going to proceed to do just that. So you log into your account by clicking on login. And I believe some of us who have been who have been using HSA before now already know this process. But I have to assume that we are all new here, so that I will start from scratch. That's why I'm doing this. Please, if you come in, mute yourself so that you will have a, a very decent uh, environment for this training. So at this point, we're about to log into the pharmacy account. So you, when you when you create your account, you will have an ID for your pharmacy. So you can either log in with your ID or the email address that you use to create your pharmacy account. So, but in this case, I want to log in with an ID. Okay, so I've entered the ID and I've also entered the password. So I log in. Please, if you have any question as I go along, please just note it down. When it's time for question, we're going to attend to all of that. So now I'm in my pharmacy account. The first thing you need to do once you create your pharmacy account is to onboard your staff just like the inventory system you have in pharmacy you have to create an account for each staff so that they can have their portfolio and you can see what each of them are doing and you can actually identify who does what on the system so for that reason we are going to use this in roles like the list staff function to do that now you can see all the staff that are already enrolled in this institution. So for you to add a new one, there are two ways to go about it. Either you enroll the staff or you create a new account. Now, what do we mean by enrolling the staff? Because at that point of registration from where we created the institutional account, it is possible for the staff to also create the account on their own. So if that is the case, all you need to do 
once that they have created the account by themselves, is to enter their staff ID given to them by the system. And then you click enroll. Then at that point, you have onboarded them into your pharmacy. And whatever they're doing at that point, you can have a record of their activity. And they also work as a team with other staff you have in your pharmacy. But in the event that they have not created their account and you want to do it for them yourself, in that case, the second option applies, which is register new staff. So when you click on that, you're going to have this form and you fill it as detailed as possible. Some options here are optional, like the other name is optional, but it's important to define the role of the staff, very important. And what is the role? You can see on that select profession, you can see various categories of staff that we have here. So if it's a pharmacist, you select the person as a pharmacist. And this also applies when they're creating the account for themselves, because the account you have will determine the kind of tool you have access to. Then we also have pharmacy technician, we have admin. So whatever is the role of the individual in your pharmacy, you, create, you select that role here and go ahead and create account when you finish filling all the form. But at this point, when you are putting the person's number, actually not, the phone number belongs to them, their phone number. You have to type it this way, 080-34-891156, just like this. And then you repeat the same number again, not a different number. You repeat the same number again, 080-34-891156. Well, if that is the person's number. And also put the address of the person. It can be the state or the full street address, any way you want it, you can do that. So once this is done, you have converted the staff. So this is yes. all the basic you need to do for your system to start working. Now, the next thing is the when you're using this cell to work, this, there are a lot of noise on the background. If you need to mute yourself, please, so that we can have a very quiet place for us to learn. Not too much pain. All right. So once that is done, uh, before we go on and do other things, I want us to see what are the type of data this, this system will be storing for you in your pharmacy. So we go to documentation analytics. So let's see what we have there. Now, one of the things you will have will be the comprehensive database of all your patients. Once you're using this system to work, anybody that will walk into your pharmacy and you register the person, you are going to have a database of all the patients that you have in your place. And system updates their details automatically for you. So let's see what we have here. So you're going to see their name, their gender, their phone number, their email, and their age. All right? So this once you have a patient here, that means that patient is your among the patients you have visited in your pharmacy. And then you will see what will happen when your staff will be managing them on the front end. Then also on this place, we'll have the diagnosis report. If you're using system to work, you're going to have all the patients you have managed and the demands you manage them for. So that if you want to, for instance, target patients with particular disease condition, you can actually filter them and communicate with them or have them have a special kind of intervention done for them. Also, you have market vigilance reporting for adverse drug reaction. You can do that here. And of course, drug recall is also covered here. Family planning, poison, pharmaceutical care, and even some other functions that are used in the hospital. We also have such services here, like the vital sign and all that. So at this point, I'm going to go straight. There are something we can do here, even health insurance. But I want to do one more thing on this. This is pharmacy account. Remember, we're still in pharmacy account. I want us to see how to label a drug using this system. And this is where you start the process, drug labeling. So even when you open drug labeling here, your staff can label drug once you customize this system. And you can also use this pharmacy account to label drug as well, if you want to. 
but it's for you to design it and see how make sure that the leveling is coming out well. Then they can now log into their own end and they will use it to level drugs. You agree with me that the error of using pen to write on drug pack is no longer fashionable. So we need to improve on the way we provide our pharmaceutical services. So for you to actually have a proper yeah, level drug, yeah. digital drug labeling is very essential. And that is why we have this digital drug labeling tool here. Now to level drug, there are two ways to go about it. If you have a prescriber on the team or the drug is prescribed using the e-prescription tool, that prescription will come here. It will come to this place. But if it, it, the drug is not prescribed in the system, possibly the patient working with a, a prescription from somewhere else. In that case, you don't use this. Instead, you have the custom labeling. So how do we do this? Before I go ahead and label a drug using this system, I want to first of all show us how to design your label the way you want it. So to do that, we're going to use level setting. Now here we'll have, by the time you're on board your pharmacy, by default, system will have a default setting for you, which will include the, the name of your pharmacy, the font size you want, the, the font style you want to use. You can see there are different font styles. So you choose the font style that appeals to you. Then set the font, the font size. Font size ideally start from 10. Don't exceed 10 if you are setting so that it will not, the level you generate will not go beyond the set border for it. Then choose if you want the, the font size to be bold or not. Now the level design for mobile device like your phone, a tablet, Android based device and the computer are not the same. So for that reason, you choose the font style for mobile device. Now, if when you print, give you a printer, it will give you almost the same output. But if you try to put two of them in the same in the same design, it will not work well. And that is why we have made a separate font size for your phone and then another one for your computer, knowing that you can actually print this label and design it from your phone. So that is the issue name, then the address of your pharmacy, the phone number that people can use to contact you. You can, you can have one or more number here. For instance, if I, had to, I want to add more number here, I can do that by adding 081-88-87036. So if you have two numbers for your pharmacy, you can add this at this point when you're customizing your label. Then after that, you if you want to have email, if you don't need the email, strike it off so that it will give you more space for you to increase the font size for other values you need. Then the dosage for the drug, that how the student will take the drug, how do you want it to be? You choose the font size, also choose the one for mobile, but start by using 10, 10 pixels for both of them. And then you check the output, which we are going to do when I get to the end of this designing interface. Then what is the name of the drug you're, you're giving to your patient? How big do you want it to be? What is the font size? And then whether you vote or normal, you do that at this stage under medication. Then the last is the further instruction. Like when you want to give this drug to patients, what is it that they need to know for them to use this drug very well? That is what we're talking about here. So also choose the font size for that. I put this on eight, but you can make it as big as you want it to be. But first of all, start trying from 10. So I put it, I put it at 10. So I put it at 10. Once I have done doing all of this, the next thing you need to do is to also your logo. If this is your logo that system picked from when you created the account, or you did not even put any logo when you created an account. Or you did not even put any logo. Here is where you can put your logo. By clicking on choose file, you pick the logo you want to appear in the label you're creating, and then you go ahead and add the logo to your label design. Once all this is done, click on submit details. All right, so once this detail submit, we're going to preview our label and see what it look like. So we have submitted our, our labels information. We're going to now view the printout of the label, what it look like. All right, so it has saved for us. So for you to now preview, now I'm using computer. I have to view it then on computer. Then after viewing it on your computer, 
Also log into your mobile device and view the design on your mobile device so that you make sure that both printing from computer and mobile device give you a good print for the level. So let me view the one for the computer, what it looks like. So you can see the design. This is what it will look like on the computer. It will actually bring out the printer interface. But let me close that so I can review, look at it very well. So that's the name, the address, phone number, the date you dispense the drug. Then if this drug requires discard after, like drugs that are for reconstruction, this will come in. You will see it when you're leveling a drug. There are option for that. Then the patient name will come here. You see where to put that when you're leveling. Then the name of the drug will come here. How to take the drug, that is the dosage will come here. Then who dispense the drug will be here. By default, you will not see who prescribe. But if for any reason you want this who prescribed to show as well, and the, patient, the, the person that prescribed, you can actually open it by default, it's not visible. And then the further instruction, you can see, anything you put here, it will show, but this is just a template that shows you what it will look like, all right? So this is what you, your label will look like when you label a drug. So with your printer integrated, you can now go ahead and print this out on your printer. Of course, there's a special printer for leveling drug, not an ordinary uh, A4 side printer. There's a printer for leveling drug. Maybe we'll get to that later on on this. So now that we are done with leveling the drug, it's now time for us to start proper patient documentation. So, but before I leave here, let me just show you how to create the label. To create a label for your patient, this the pharmacy account, you remember, I've not entered the staff account. Click on create new label. And this pops up. Then go ahead and put the patient name. Let's say it's Mr. John. We have done that. What is the name of the drug? Let's assume it's cataflam. Just type cataflam. Don't bother putting the dosage form. You can see it gives you all the various dosage form for that drug you're looking for. So in case of cataflam, just pick if it's cataplan 50 milligram tablet, you select that. Then on the dosage, don't bother writing take one and just put the number of tablets involved. System is going to give you the assisted input system so that you don't type so much. So you put, if it's, this is one tablet, put just put type one. And this one, type it in word and not in, in figure. So once you put one, it will give you the options of what how the dog will be taken. So in this case, Take one tablet every 12 hours. Now, how long will this drug be taking? Assuming it to be taken for five days. Please type five in word, five. So for five days. Now, this drug is a, an NSAID. It could be taken after meal, not on empty stomach. So in that case, keyword there is meal. Or if you even say, if it, even if you write after, it will give you what you're looking for. So I put meal. So once I put me, you can see take by mouth after meal. That is the further instruction now for the patient. So at this point, we are done labeling this drug. So I click on save label. The label is saved. The next thing I need to now do is for me to print the label. So I click on print. And that is the label designed for us here. And it's only going to the printer because I already have the printer installed here. So that is the printer interface. Once I click on this, it's going to come out on the printer. So at this point, we have seen how to label the drug, but there's one more thing we need to look at. Let's look at all the labels that are already here. You will see that there's something else we have done to make this job easy for you. Okay. So I click on custom level. What we have just done now is the custom leveling.
So I'm waiting for the level to open. My system is actually doing so many things at the same time. So, all right, I actually opened the level. That's why I was not able to return back. So that is the level now. And I was saying that we have done something to make this leveling easy for you. So now let, let's look at this. As when you have level cataplan before, and another person comes in, I don't want to go and start this leveling process again. All you need to do is for you to go to this cataplan and type duplicate. And once you say duplicate, is going to return all that you have put in this label before now. And then all you need to do, just simply put the patient name. Maybe this time around, patient will be Abiola. So you just type Abiola. Whatever is the patient's name, you put maybe Mr. Abiola, right? So put Mr. Abiola. You are done. You are done with labeling this drug. You don't need to begin to label all over again. Just simply click duplicate, and then system will duplicate the label for you. So All right, so I've duplicated the label. I will now print it. So in this case, you don't need to start writing the label again. You simply duplicate it. So I can now print the label from here for another another patient without necessarily starting it from the scratch. So now I've labeled this drug for Abiola instead of the previous patient. And I see put all this information I need to put inside. Now we're done with this leveling for now until when we start to do review, if you have any question that has to do with the level, we can attend to that. So let's go and now do the proper clinical documentation we are here for. All right, so I have to now log into the staff account instead of the pharmacy account for me to do clinical documentation. So I'm logging out from this account. Uh, Yusuf, so this time around, I'm logging in as a staff, and the staff can be can be playing any of the role, maybe a pharmacist or pharmacy technician or whatever role the person is playing in the institution. All right, so I want to log in and for the staff too, they can log in with their user ID and they can also log in with the email they use to create their, their staff account. So, but I want to log in with an ID. So that is the ID. And the moment you put the ID of the staff, you're going to have the Instagram gateway of the, of the pharmacy pop up this way. And in the event that you, the, the staff in question work in more than one place, you're going to have the kind of interface I have now. So the first institution where he or she is enrolled will pop up by default. But if you're not going to this institution, you can select any of the other one below it. Once you select it, you go ahead and log in. This account is for, is for a pharmacist. So now I have logged in as a pharmacist. And 
how do we now get to have your our patient list? The list of patients we have in your pharmacy created. It starts from here. You click on add patient for your staff. Whenever they have a new patient come to your pharmacy, they have to create this account for them by putting the patient's sole name, the first name, other name if they have is optional though. Then email is optional. Not every patient have email, but if you want to use it, it will be good for you because if you want to do email outreach for your patient, you will need that. But if they don't have, it's, it's something that you can do without it. Then confirm the email or the patient by putting it again here. Then patient address can put maybe the street address in full, or if you just want, you can set the location. Maybe if it's a KJA or however you want it, it's up to you. Then the patient phone number, you have to start it just as shown on the input field by typing it 080, then you continue on the complete number. Then also put the patient phone number once more here. Once that is done, that is the country by, by the port. It's already selected Nigeria. Then go to the state. Which state is the patient located? As many as Lagos. So it's a let Lagos. Gender. It's a let gender if it's a male. Then date of birth. Even if the patient did not give you the date of birth, you can make an assumption. If you feel like the patient will not tell you, for those who do not understand what you are doing, you can make an assumption. But ideally, it's good you get their date of birth. Because, for instance, if you want to send them a message on their birthday, if you don't have their date of birth, you will not be able to do that. All right. So you put their date of birth, and you can just start by just typing input straight into the, the, the field, and it will go ahead and give you what you want. Let's say it's 2000. So we have put the date of birth of the patient. So uploading image is optional, even the national ID is optional. But one thing you need to do is the patient password. This password, you are not going to need it to do anything in your pharmacy, but it helps to secure the folder against any unauthorized asset from anywhere, unless the person is working in your pharmacy or the patient give approval to it. So this password can be, you can use the patient phone number as their password. You can use their surname. You can use anything you want as, their, as the password because in their system, there's a place that is already saved for you. And it decides none of your staff will make use of it. It's just to protect the patient folder from any unauthorized access. So once this password is keyed in, maybe let's assume you put one, two, three, four, and you put one, two, three, four, you click add patient. Once this is done in your pharmacy, instantly, that patient will be added in your pharmacy as one of your patients. And once that is done, your staff can now go ahead and start to manage this patient by clicking on attend to patient. Please, you have to note down the stages we are past now. If, uh, once the staff is on their on their interface, just as I'm using this one now, for a new patient, they add click on add patient to create a, an e folder for the patient. And once that is done, the next thing they need to do is to now attend to the patient. And that is where the documentation will take place. Talking about the digital documentation we're talking about, that is where it's going to take place right now. So to do that, you click on attend to patient. All right. So attend to patient has five options. But right now, I will recommend you start using the last two. Either attend to patient via ID or attend to patient via their phone number. Now, let's see how it goes. For your, your, your patient that account was created in your pharmacy, let's start with using the phone number option. So if you want to use their phone number, you attend to them. Now, their phone number is more like an ID for them because it would have been their patient ID. But you know, you and the patient may not even remember this ID so often. So for that reason, their phone number will be easy for them to remember each time they come to your pharmacy. So you click on the phone number option. So you put the phone number of the patient. Let's assume it's 080-34891157. Let me put it this way. All right, so you see what happened. The moment I put it, knowing that the, the patient was registered here, there won't be need for me to use phone, the password to log into this folder. So I simply click on 
verify and I'll get the folder of the patient. Right? So we are right now inside the patient folder. Right inside the patient folder, you can see there are a number of things you can do. You can, you can send them SMS to their phone as an SMS. You can do that from here by clicking on this SMS. You can see the name of your phone as it will pop up and all the previous messages you sent to them. System keep track of all that. So any message you want to send to the patient, you can actually type it here and you send it to them by pushing this send SMS button and they will get it in their phone. Even if they don't have internet, they can get this SMS. Then this is for live chat, audio call and video call. So then after this, you know they have the patient by, by, by bio data, like who is this patient, next of kin, the address and all that. And then the if you, this patient has dependent, dependent meaning that it has they have a word or child that is attached to this account. This is where it takes place. So you can see this person have already some dependent attached to this account and you can create more. So that means that if a child, you are attending to a child, you need, since that child doesn't have a phone number, you need to first of all create an account for the parents. You can now bundle the, bond the, the child's account to that of the parents by using this ad dependent patient. So you can now attach the child's account to that of the parents. So once you log into the parent's account, you can as well attend to the child. And you can also log into the child's account directly, any way you want it. So all the clinical information about the patient is here. So, but I don't want to show this folder because it's actually a real patient. So let me go ahead and take us to the demo patient account that we're going to use to do this. So for the demo patient account, I'm going to use the patient ID to do that instead of using the the phone number option. So that shows that it's not only phone number you can use to log into patient folder. So I click on the patient ID, P80016666. So that is the patient ID I'm looking for, All right? So I click on verify to retrieve the folder of the patient. All right, so now we're inside the demo patient folder, right? And uh, this is what we have in this patient folder. It has one dependent, it will have health insurance account or policy running. You can see that's why it's active. It has some health insurance policy on this account, meaning that this can actually help you to manage health insurance service delivery. Then we have the clinical documentation, all the information put inside the system. These are some of the things that have been added in it. And we're going to see how to create this and how to use it. How do we document this way and how to use this? So now, how do we create this record we just saw now? You need to click on create new record. So when you click on create new record, there are so many tools we have here, but there is one that is very important to us. I will select some of them. Let's start with point of care. Point of care is very important to help us really understand what is our patient condition so that we can provide more informed treatment intervention. So for you to document, use point of care, simply click on point of care. And then you will see various types of point of care you can actually provide, classify according to the, the, class, the group they belong to. Now, some of the drug we give to a patient may have effect on the kidney. So that means that if you're given a drug that can affect the kidney function, there may be need for you to establish a baseline for such drug before you start to treat the patient with such drug. So, and that is what this is all about if you're talking about kidney function. So you click on that, these are some of the tests we can actually use to ascertain the function of a patient's kidney. So for those that you want to run, and it doesn't mean you must run this test in your pharmacy, there's already in 2 
here to allow you to generate lab requisition. And if you can go to the lab and run this test, and then you put it here when it returns with the test. So for instance, if we want to document this, and we, we will have reference to help us understand what we are doing. So like if this person is a, is a male of, let's say it's a female, you put the reference value for that, and then glomerular filtration rate, these are the value for the various age groups so that you can actually interpret it properly. So as when this patient falls in this age group, that means if we're expecting like 99 here, then here we have 0 0.68. Let's assume this is what we got. Unit are already there. Then urine creatinine clearance rate per day for female, you have between this to one. So as when we have a 400 as the value we got if the, the patient gets from the test. That is what we have here. Then there are other ones like the pancreas function, liver function, cardiac matter, marker, like someone that is hypertensive and you take it anti-hypertensive and you want to find out if the cardiac, the, the heart is under any form of stress. This kind of cardiac marker will help you to find out if the heart is being stressed. That is the essence of cardiac marker test. Then we also have the, the lipid and cardiac risk factor screening. This will help you to look at the, the cholesterol profile and so many other, other tests you can actually do, like the, the C-reactive protein that we have here. These are some of the tests that will help you to know the, the condition of the cardiac function of the patient. Then anemia too is there, like someone is malaria, is suffering from malaria, and you want to find out if the blood level is normal. There are simple Tests can even run the pharmacy to actually do this. There are simple machines that can actually run tests and give you these values right in your pharmacy without even sending the patient anywhere. And this will be other more ways of you making generating revenue for your pharmacy beyond just selling medications. So that actually see that there are so many points of care tests we can run in our pharmacy. And those that we cannot run, we can send the, the patient to a lab to do it and bring the results and then we use it to populate this field in our point of care interface, All right? But most importantly is the area of pharmaceutical care. And of course, we know pharmaceutical to be direct responsible provision of drug therapy for the purpose of achieving a definite outcome that improves the patient quality of life. So, and uh, every pharmacy is supposed to be in position to provide pharmaceutical care. So let's see how to use this Moscow care tool to manage our patients. Also remember, you can see we have prescription there, how to capture the drug that you're giving to your patient so that when you look at their folder, you can actually have an idea what you have given them before. In case if they come back again, you now know what you need to do. Instead of you trying to remember in your memory what you have uh, given them previously, you can actually do this. And this is where you set a generate level for you once you use this prescription tool. All right. So, but our major primary focus today is this Moscow Care Tool. Let's see how we can actually improve our service using Moscow Care Tool. Now, when we talk about Moscow Care, the first stage of the process is to obtain information from the patient. So, and to do that, you have this set of two under subjective data, like what the patient know about their condition, what they will tell you about their condition, the, the treatment of their ailment, this is where you capture all of that. So you take the patient complaint. What is the patient complaint? So you document all that applies here. Maybe you don't sleep well or whatever it is. After they started taking the drug, or they having the pain increase, or they start having rashes after they start the drug. That is where you document it. Whatever is the main complaint. But remember that under this subjective data, it's not a must for you to use all the field. You just use the one that you feel is important to the clocking of the patient. Then if you need to dig further, maybe you want to take the, uh, the history of the illness or the history of the, the, the drug problem they're having, you do that here. If you need family history, any form of allergy, are they having allergy history? Here you document any form of allergy they have experienced in the past. And then do they have any other ailment that they're suffering from? Here you do that comorbidity. What are the comorbidity they are, they, are, they, are, they are going through? Then look at the, the past medication history. What are the other drugs they are taking 
before they started the drug or whatever it is they're going through right now. So you said the drug name and the dose they were use, how they were taking the drug, you said that here. And you're allowed to use Chotan if you want to here. Let's assume you're, you talk about the uh, cataflam. Cataflam 50 milligrams. That's what they say they're taking. Sorry. Um, I put it at the wrong place. So that's the name of the drug. And then the dosage, maybe one TDS or one BD. And that, how long have they taken it? Maybe two weeks. You can add more of the drug that taking. You put another drug that taking under past medication history. Remember, we are talking about past medication history. What have they been taking before now? So you add as many drugs as possible. That based on what they are telling you, because we are not with them. But whatever they tell you, this will help you to make decisions for them at the end of the day. Then, in now come to current medication history. What are they taking currently? If they can remember or they have the drug with them. Here you capture it just like what we have done above. You put the name of the drug here, the dosage and the frequency, and how long have they used this drug? So that this when you talk about length, if the drug is supposed to use maximum of two weeks and they use it for three months, of course, you can begin to identify what is the problem is. All right. So next is the herbal medication. Are they on any herbal medication? Remember, we're talking about pharmaceutical care. So you ask them, are they on any herbal medication? If they are, capture it just as what we have done before. Then current herbal medication also capture that if they are on any current herbal medication, why taking the other drug they're giving to them? So at this point, we now have to look at the, uh, the subjective data. On that subjective data, we now look at it. Is there any test that we can do that will help us to understand what is going on with the patient? First of all, we take the vital signs here. You can see, we can take the vital signs of the patient. And uh, we can even reference the vital sign. You can see that when you take the blood pressure, let's say you get 120 over 80. Then pulse rate is 70. Let me finish putting the end value first. Then respiratory rate, let's assume I got 16 when I checked it. Temperature, 36.5. 30, then oxygen saturation, 98. Then height, let's assume a 1.5. 1.8 rather, then wait, 70. Now we have done this. If I, you want to re reference it, which will help you to actually interpret the input we are making at this stage. You have to do that by adult be, had been supposed to be between 60 to 100. Then respiratory rate for adult 12 to 20. Temperature, if it's normal, 36.5 to 37.5. Now you're referencing the result for better in interpretation. Then oxygen saturation normal should be between 95 to 100. Height for a male should be between 1.6 to 1.82. So, but this is a female, so that should be the value. Then weight, if this person is 1.8 in height, then that should be the weight the, the person will have between 65 to 81. All right, so we are done with the vital signs. What about other tests that the individual can do? So in that case, if we run any form of test at this point, we can do that. You can see the various tests listed here. Maybe it, it took total cholesterol. What is the value? Maybe we got um, 230 milligram per DL. And then if you have the reference value, you can tell us here, maybe less than 200 milligram per DL, right? This is under the laboratory result. So you can add as many of such tests you have done at this point. You can click on add. You keep on declaring all the subjective data you have, you have gathered at this point that will help you to understand what is the problem. So having done all of this, you now come up with what is the what is the patient, what is the diagnosis? What is the patient being treated for? So you declare the diagnosis for the patient, what is it being managed for? Maybe it's hypertension or diabetes, whatever is the diagnosis of the patient, you declare that here. So with all the information we have so far, we now look at what, what is the problem of this patient as it stands. Because we need to identify the drug therapy problem. So this is not the medical diagnosis, but the drug therapy problem we're trying to look out for. So for us to use this tool, we are doing actually medication therapy management. 
So you click on assessment and impression to find out what is the problem. Now at this stage, if you see that the dose is too high, dose is low, there's untreated indication, there's unnecessary drug, wrong drug, right? Drug interaction, drug adherence, contraindication. Here is time for you to do that. Let me say dose is too high or unnecessary drug, whatever is the case from what we have seen, maybe you say dose is too high. Can now say that maybe you are taking this drug for, for a long time. Maybe you have taken drug for, for longer than necessary. Okay, so as well, this is what I put here. Okay, so this is what I put here as the problem of this patient. Then what do we intend to do? How do we solve this problem? What are we, what is our treatment goal? Maybe you need to adjust the treatment or you need to contact the doctor or whatever is the problem at this point, we need to declare the treatment goal. What is, what are we going to achieve for this patient? We declare the treatment goal here. So after declaring the treatment goal, the next thing we need to document is the Francisco care plan. What is the care plan? How do we achieve or how do we achieve this goal that we have declared? So depending on what we are managing the patient for, we are trying to resolve the drug therapy problem you have seen. That is what your goal is going to. And then you come up with a care plan. Right? So uh, once you declare the care plan, what and what need, we need to be done so that whoever is going to log into this folder after you, we review the care plan and key into that. Or if the care plan is not achieving the result, the person can now amend the care plan after you have done with your work. So after the, the, the uh, declaring the care plan, the next thing is now the, the monitoring parameter. How are you going to check if the patient is responding to the, to the treatment or not? So for instance, if, I come this place. You can see what is already happening. As I open this, there is an existing monitoring parameter for this patient, for instance. So, and we here we have total cholesterol, and uh, at the initial stage, the total cholesterol of this patient is 260 milligrams per DL. But this one this in question has said that he wants to achieve this total cholesterol to be less than 199 milligrams per DL. Then, fasting blood sugar, the, the patient started with 150 milligrams per DL. But the premises that, uh, that Clark this has put that he wants to achieve 75 milligrams per day, uh, that is the target of this treatment. Then for the blood pressure, the, the patient got 150 over 100 millimeter mercury. And the target is for the him or her to achieve 120 over 80 millimeter mercury. These are all under subjective parameter. How about the, the subjective parameter? Now we have taken care of objective parameter. Under subjective parameter, this is what the patient tells you. As when the patient is diabetic and he asks the person, how often do you urinate at night? And he said, you urinate five times. And now your aim is to bring the number of urination at night to two times. That is your, your target for the treatment, to know that you are achieving the goal of the treatment. You can add as many as you want on the monitoring parameters. You set the parameter once and then use it to guide your treatment. So you can add more parameter as you like. You can see I'll open another field. I can declare another monitoring parameter, right? And then I set what the patient tells me because see, I, I don't know what they are going to know. It's what, from what they tell me that I can, I can input these subjective parameters. So once this is done, you now observe, after saving this, how do you remember what happened here? That is where we now have pharmacotherapy, monitoring and evaluation. And what does this do for us? Now, having set monitoring parameter, which we have already done for this. In fact, if you have a patient after the first clocking, you don't need to do most of what you have been doing all this while. Just use the monitoring parameter to evaluate the treatment outcome. So you set the monitoring parameter the very first time they visited. I can always add or subtract. And then in subsequent visits, all you need to do is to check what is their, you recheck the, the parameter you are monitoring again. It can be the total cholesterol, 
can even be something that will help you to check the kidney function or liver, liver function or the pancreas function, as the case may be. So all you need to do at this point, you can see already, I did not put anything here, but it's showing, showing me the target of this treatment. Let's say at this point, the total cholesterol has come to 230. Maybe it's another VC because it has visited before for us to have that function parameter above. So maybe today it has gotten to maybe, let's say 220. And then passing blood sugar, maybe we now have 115 as against wh where it started from. And then the blood pressure, maybe today we have 130 over 95. All right, on that subjective, how often is, does it urinate at night this time around? Maybe it's three times before they break, you need three times. So with all that we have done so far, the next thing we now look, look at is the recommendation. What do you recommend for these patients? What are your recommendations? So here you declare whatever you want to be doing to help achieve this goal, right? Then you justify why this recommendation should be, should be, should be in place. And at this point, you can maybe recommend like diet and lifestyle adjustment that will help to achieve the treatment goal. And then you now have to declare why, what is the role of this in the treatment, in, in achieving the treatment aim and objective. And then if there's any intervention you have to make, like contacting some other health, the healthcare provider, maybe the person that, that prescribed the drug or whatever it is that taking, can actually reach, that, reach out to them. And then what is the outcome of the intervention? Then medication reconciliation. If they have some drugs that are taking that maybe some of them need to go, you have to do all of that here. You document it, medication reconciliation, then patient counseling. What are the things they need to know about? And of course, we're talking about the drug level and dosing. So, but we're already taking care of it somewhere. So you don't need to actually bother about this one. Now, this is about pharmaceutical care. But we also know that some of our patients require dietary intervention to achieve the treatment goal. So in case you want to do this for them, look at their diet and see what you can do to help them out. Tell those that are diabetic, those that are hypertensive, what are they going to do to achieve the treatment goal? You need to use this. You can see there are still a lot of tools, but just know how, to, you can see that you have an idea how to use this tool. Any tool you want to use, just open it and then you document whatever you want to do there. Nobody says that you must use everything there. Just put as many as you would like or as many as you feel is necessary. And then you save it, which is the save button here. But we're about to do that once we finish with this, reviewing this uh, nutritional, nutritional management tool. All right, so that is the channel management tool. You can see here you can, for you to understand what you need to do for the patient under the channel management, you can, Look, you put their, their religion into consideration so that uh, whatever you're going to recommend for them will not be against their religion, right? So we have various forms of religion here. So it's select any religion that, that, that the, the parent is uh, practicing, right? So let's assume this is what I selected. And then that's the phone number already there. Their occupation, what do they do for a living? Because this may affect even their lifestyle, even the diet. So you need to look at, can they afford whatever you're going to recommend for them? Then the monitor status, you also capture this. Right? So that's monitor status. Whether they're married, single, separated, whatever be the case, you put it there. Then at your level, you can put this if you like. Nobody says that you must put everything you have here. So going further, see under the channel management, anthropometric reading. Here you can check their weight, their height, their body mass, weight circumference, hip circumference. Then if there's any tests that need to be done for you to understand the nutritional <coughs> needs better, here you put that the biochemical assessment and laboratory results. So you can actually add all the tests that need to be done and interpret them. Then the next will be the medical history. Try to understand their medical history. I've not done any form of surgery. So you put all that apply here. This is for those that need nutritional intervention. It's not that everybody that comes to your pharmacy, you start doing this. 
So it's only functional intervention. Then dietary assessment. So you find out about their dietary needs by filling all these documents here. Then lifestyle, you check their lifestyle. So that's for the lifestyle. So it documents as appropriate. Then now at this point, you now look at nutritional diagnosis. For every nutritional need of the patient, maybe you have a lack of a adequate mineral, it doesn't take enough a fiber in the diet, whatever it is, you are going to do that with this by clicking on diagnosis. So you did you do that, you select the diagnosis from here, and then you now declare whether this is a new condition or he has been going through this for, for some time. So whether it's a chronic case or it's a new case, you do that here. Then now, what is the intervention? How will you manage what and what is he going to do to improve the diet or the or the, the diet or in such a way that it's going to help you to achieve the treatment outcome? So here you come up with the, the nutritional goal, the menu plan, what and what will you be eating to achieve that? And then you now go ahead and document the, the nutritional monitoring tool. Here you do that. And this will be for follow-up monitoring. So once you do this for the very first time, you can now follow up when they come and review the, the outcome and then do the follow-up here. Then uh, lastly is appointment. Whenever you do this kind of work for your patient, there may be need for you to do follow-up appointment. So uh, for you to give them appointment, for subsequent visits, this is where you do that. So you pick the dates you want them to return for follow-up appointments, right? Maybe they're going to come in two weeks' time. That should be here, two weeks' time. And what time, if you want to, what time do you want them to come? If you want to put the time, maybe about this time, if that is the case, or whatever time that applies. Okay, then what is the purpose for the appointment? Is it for follow-up or monitoring? Whatever be the case, you do that. Let's say it's follow-up. Right, so now that we have done all of this at to this stage, but though we did not use prescription, but already that should be a problem. We know how to write a prescription. So I want to save this. Let's see all that we have done so far. Right, so I have saved this in the patient folder. So I click OK. So now where do you find all the things you have done in this system? Here you get that, under patient follow-up. So when you click on patient follow-up, it will show you all your patient files. And the last file you worked on will be at this position. Followed by the next file, the next file, according to how you, you worked on them last. So the most recent will be this one. So you open the, anytime you want to review the, the, what you have done, you click on it and can view what you have done for the patient. This is your own interface as the staff. Meanwhile, while the staff is doing this, the institution will have a copy of anything that the staff is doing at their own interface. The, 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 the pharmacy owner we have access to all this information that is being put inside the system. So you can see all that we have done on that point of care. These are the tests we have documented on that point of care. Then the pharmaceutical care, the nutritional management tests we did. These are all we documented on the assessment, pharmaceutical care plan, monitoring parameter. Then the pharmacotherapy monitoring, that is here. Though we didn't actually put anything there. But each time you carry out those tests and you put it here, this is where you're going to show. 
Then uh, the past medication history, cataplam and how long they are taking it under the Mepion review. Then the vital signs recorded for the patient. Then the lab test done. This is the lab, lab results. So you can see all that we have documented. You can actually go through and read all that you have done according to how you document it in the patient interface. So from here, <clears throat> you can now, anytime you want to check what you have done for this patient, this patient, you can review this work and then reach out to the patient, do for, now do follow up for the patient. You can see you have even the button for you to message the patient and check how they're doing. Maybe based on your review of the patient folder, you can decide to find out how they're doing. I can send them SMS from here, whatever you want to send to them. You can message them from here and check how they're doing after you must have given them some intervention as you have done right now. Right? So um, the next one is uh, the health insurance, but I don't want to go into that now so that will not make this training too long, but this is for your appointment. Whenever you give your patient appointment, all the appointments you have will be arranged here. And of course, can you follow up on them from here? You can also send them SMS from here. You can chat them up. You can see the reason why you're giving them appointment. And of course, this is your number. And whenever you are done with this appointment, you complete it by clicking on this button and you check it off. Meaning that you have, you have completed this appointment. So anyone that you come that is spending, you can find out from here the completed one and the pending appointment so that you can now try to find out from the patients maybe they don't honor the appointment you can check out here and then find out why they did not turn up i will not though there's payment and billing and all that and they also we're going to integrate inventory in this system in the net in the in the next few weeks so that you can actually use this to manage both your inventory and your sales and have all your sales report on this tool as well. But at this stage, I will stop here and I will take questions that may help us to go deep into some of these issues I've already discussed. So if you have any, any question at this point, you can raise your hand. Hello, if you have any question now on all that we have done so far, you can raise your hand because there are other things we may just need to cover, but I don't want to go for that for now. Let's let's review what we have done so far. So you can unmute yourself, Bella or Carfo. Okay. Um, um hello. Can you hear, can you hear me? me? Yes. Thank you for the presentation. It was very lovely and I learned a lot. Well, I want to ask, how do we have access to this tool? Is it available? Are you still working on it or is your team still working on it? How do we have access to it? Okay. It's available and uh, a lot of people have been using it before now. So for you to Use it, just have to install health staff. You go to healthstaff.org. Let me go there so I can see what I'm doing. I, I will have to log out from here so that okay. you understand what I'm doing. I will log out from this account. So when you go to healthstaff.org, that's where you have to be. That's where this, these tools are located. So just click on it and visit the site, healthstaff.org. Thank you very much. 
So once you're here, you can now set up your pharmacy account. And when you set up your pharmacy account, you onboard your staff and you're good to go. And it's free. For you to set up your pharmacy account on this system, you pay just 10,000 Naira per annum. Okay. Thank you very much. All right. Any other question? I have one. Can go on. Unmute yourself. Okay. Good evening. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. Good evening. Good that was evening. a very lovely presentation. So insightful. And uh, from all what you said, it indicates that our work will be very, very seamless. I'm talking from community pharmacy perspective. I don't know. Those that have started using this app, which I don't know if there are people that have started using it, uh, have they given you a feedback? The time frame it takes, that's in a pharmacy now, the time, the time interval, how long does it take to attend to a patient? Because from all what you said, it will take quite some time though. Uh, so I don't know, most of the patients we see in a pharmacy, they are always in a hurry. Is there any feedback that you have received that probably, okay, give us an idea, okay, how long it will take to attend to a particular uh, patient? Thank you. All right. Let me address it before we move on. You see, for this tool, particularly the pharmaceutical care, when you have need for it, after the first visit of the patient, on subsequent visits, you don't need to go through all this process again. All you need to do is to check the monitoring parameter you have already established. So, but for the very first time you're documenting for this patient, you can actually do this within five to 10 minutes. It's only left for you to decide how you want to manage the, the time you have. Good Just time. like when you go to see a doctor oh, and a doctor is consulting, you can see some of them consult you in two minutes and they give Good you prescription. Time. So they can consult you for 20 minutes, 30 minutes, oh, depending on what is the condition they're trying to resolve. So it can vary, it depends on you, how you want to do it. Okay. But it's not a must for you to use all the tools. It, it just has to find out what is the need of the patient. But okay. then about pharmaceutical care, it's basically drug-related need. There's even the clacking tool for like someone coming and coming with minor okay. condition that can be managed in the pharmacy. There's another session for that. We didn't even go to that area. There's another session for that one. But we can't possibly go through everything okay. under this okay. scenario. Right? But okay. what I recommend is that minimum okay. scenario is at least for you to now start by first of all, Labeling every medication that you dispense. That's the certain point. From there, you can scale it up by doing the clacking and even the pharmaceutical care and all that. But at least for us to have a change or let people see a change in what we do, is for us to label the drug using the digital option. Okay. And each staff has their own account that one cannot get access to, right? Yes. Yes. They will all have their, okay. it has, they have to create their own account right in your pharmacy so that you can okay. actually interface with you. Okay. It's all right. Thank you very much. I'm quite satisfied. Okay. Any other question? If you have a question, raise up your hand so we can, we can attend to you. Thank 
So if we don't have more questions, I have to go ahead and take us through the the commission system whereby if you want to manage or you rather you want to collaborate with other healthcare provider. How, how it goes. So I'm going to log into the institutional account where we can do this. And then the billing and all the health insurance operation you can do on this system. Dr. Jude, Dr. Jude, please check the chat room for a question. There's a question in the chat room. Okay. All right, let me start from the top and see all the questions you have. Okay. All right, somebody asked about the issue of data safety. You see, you are in full control of your data. That is why you have your password, right? <clears throat> Nobody can access your, your patient information. Move by by 24 and I get six. And that's five thousand. All right, you're covering that term. Uh, by six, or by twenty-four, one by twenty-four, eleven. Okay. 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 Yeah, I'm a I'm a I'm a Yeah, 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 yeah. Move. Where you Move this us. Again. I'll give it to you. I'll give it to you. This past time, you know. this us. Uh-huh. Oh, oh, less than three years, Abby. Please, I have, I have a question. Yes. And can Mr. Olawo put it to you? Uh, uh, I'm going to remember the page. Four, I see six. I'm going to have a Someone <laughs> Please, Mr. Lawele, can you mute yourself, please? Thank you. Thank you.
Dr. Jude, we can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Okay, yes, we can hear you now. All right. I can hear you now. Okay, all right. So I was talking about where you have collaboration with other healthcare provider, and they want you to pay them certain percentage of the amount you earn from the referral. This is the tool you use to do that. But this tool is more important to those that are into medical laboratory because most of the time you find out that they, they get referral from the pharmacy, they get referral from the hospital, and they, they use this tool to manage their commission system for the provider that is available to them. That's what this tool is all about. So once you set the commission here, that's what I was doing before, then here you now track the, the commission that, that those providers have earned in your, in your institution. There, here you now have the revenue collection by your staff. You can actually use this to manage revenue collection by your staff. You can see every staff collection is here and the mode of payment that actually they, they, they need to account for that. And here you have your patient bill and even the system can generate invoice for the bills given to patients once they are paid. You can see all the stuff has been paid. You can open it and print out the invoice. So that is the invoice which you can print out from here. This is for thermal printer printing, and this is for the A4 printing. So if I want to print from thermal printer, I will simply click, click on this, and you can see it's going to thermal printer. So that's for thermal printer printing, right? So that's, that's the level here for thermal printer. Some of people are raising up their hand. I will still attend to you. Then the next one is health insurance. But I will not want to avoid us with so much, so much information today. So I may leave that for today. Maybe subsequent training if I talk about health insurance. So uh, Uche, Uche Chuku, can you go ahead and unmute yourself? Okay, thank you very much. Please, the question I want on the other when you when you that's when you add a patient i want to know the need for the password although okay. you mentioned it but okay i don't know i'm seeing a situation where if you keep having different passwords for for different patients would it lead to confusion and then from like a staff is registering a, a, a new a new patient is giving a password. How so I just want to know then you, the owner of the of the premises, and you're coming to assess uh, what has been entered into the system. You don't have this password, or just like an advice around it. Okay. Because if you say you I just want to just give an advice around, I just want to know what that password, why why was he added, and just a general advice on the password issue. Okay, all right. So let me let me address that issue. You see, you as the owner or the pharmacy does not need to use any password to log into patient folder. You can see I'm actually inside the institutional account. Whatever, even the staff does not need the password, but I will tell you what the, the password is meant for. Now, this is patient folder. And you can see all that your staff are doing. So in each of the patient folder, I'm opening the patient folder. So these are the, all the patient folder that your staff are working on. So when you open each of the folder, you can see what has been done inside the folder. Then even the staff to have their own files and you can check their file to see what the staff are doing. For now, where the password comes in is this. You know, the idea is that if you have a patient that visits your pharmacy, for instance, and he goes to another pharmacy somewhere else and he goes to another pharmacy elsewhere, you know, for a patient to follow the treatment you're giving to them, they need to understand what is their need. 
So this system has interface for patients to at their own end. See, we go to this hospital, I was I go to this, this pharmacy, they give me drugs, and then from there I went to this lab. They can actually see their history from their own interface. But then those places they, they go to cannot access your file unless and they cannot even access your file. They can only have access to pull out the patient empty folder. They are empty folder. Just say my name is Okoye. So you can put my, my empty folder as uh, this folder is already existing somewhere. So you pull it out and start to use it to document patient information in your own and that another pharmacy entirely. Now for them to actually access that thing at that folder with the patient phone number, the payer has to provide them the, the password. If the patient does not give them the password, they cannot access that folder elsewhere to start to use it to document because they can't create a folder for the same patient more than once anywhere. So once you create in pharmacy A, you cannot create again in pharmacy B. You can only retrieve the empty folder and use it to document for the patient in pharmacy B without the need to create another account. But what will make that person in B from accessing that folder is until he has the password or the folder. And in case the patient forget the password, there is a simple way to actually get that password. When you log into your system as a staff, when you log in as a staff and you, the patient doesn't know the password, but they know their phone number. All they need to do is to key in the patient phone number and instantly send we send the, the password attached to that account to the patient phone number so that you can give it to the provider at the other end to retrieve the patient uh, empty folder and start to document inside the folder for the patient in their own maybe lab this time around or even a hospital that is running this same software. So that's why we say one patient, one folder because at the patient end, everything about him or her goes to one file. That is the essence of the password. So, so then the question now becomes, so what it simply means is that a patient can, can access health staff. Am I right? Yes. They can access their file. The patient can. They can access their file then in health staff. Their file on, on health staff. Yes. Then for the other institution, let's say in my pharmacy, I recorded, I had some recordings or some things about the patient. If the patient has the password and gives it to another institution, does that institution assess the record I have for this patient for my pharmacy? I think I've already addressed that question, but by saying that what they will get is the patient empty folder, like your patient detail. It, it, they now begin to create their own document without necessarily creating another account. That is how the system works. So they don't, they don't need to create another account because you have already used that phone number as an identifier. So you cannot create that phone number several times on the system elsewhere. So all they need to do is to retrieve. So the you're not, you're not getting. I'm not. You're not get. You're not getting me. What What I mean is that's just what I just want you to address. I mean the information I've recorded on my. This I've created the patient's folder in my pharmacy, and I've recorded some information against this patient. The patient has the password. Gives to another provider. What I want to know is, does that provider have access to what I've recorded? You understand? It On that patient from my pharmacy. It does yes or no? Does it? That. That... Yes. Okay. Okay. It's only you that can give them access if you want to. As for by, by default, they don't have access to, your, to anything created in your pharmacy. They don't have access. And nobody have access. Even your staff too. Once your staff log outside your... Once you remove your staff from your, your, your pharmacy, they will not have access again. Even your staff that created that, that file, once you remove them from your pharmacy account, they will not have access to the file again. Any other question? So I mentioned uh, how to retrieve, in case it can go somewhere else, how do you get the, the file? So I want to demonstrate how to do that. So I'm logging into staff account. 
So if a patient comes in and you want to say to the patient and he says that, oh, that you already have a server account somewhere, but he doesn't know the he doesn't know the password that I can use to retrieve it or to have access to it. So you can document whatever you want to put in in their in your own side. This is where you go to attend the patient via patient ID. And then say recover patient detail. You click on this. And then you enter the patient phone number. So you will get an alert with the phone with the detail of the patient delivered to their phone. So once you put their phone number this way and you click on recover detail, they will get an SMS with their login detail. So it has been sent to the patient phone. So when the patient now open their phone as an, they will see the, the login detail in their SMS. So they can now give it to you to now log in and do whatever you want to do in your own pharmacy. But whatever that is done elsewhere, you won't have it. You only have their empty folder and nothing will be inside it for you to start to create your own clinical documentation in that in your pharmacy. So if there's no other question, that means we are done for today. Oh, sorry, please, just like if, sorry, just like if follow up. Okay. So how, let's say the person has uh, a health sub account somewhere and he didn't even mention it to me. So is it when, when I'm entering the patient details, once I enter the phone number, it will show me that this account has, is already existing elsewhere. Is that how it works? Yes, if you try to create a new account and it's already existing elsewhere, it will tell that this, this account is already existing elsewhere. So you can now ask them to, you can now use their phone number and retrieve it because their phone number is the is what ties the, the patient to the folder. So once you put the phone number of the patient, it will tell that this account is already existing. So instead of creating one, you can now, if they don't know their detail, just put their phone number. This is where to create the account. But once you are trying to do this for the patient and it tells you that this folder is already existing, that the patient's phone number already have an account. So you can now go to attend to patients. And if they don't know their, their password to, that controls the account, they can simply come here. You now put the, the phone number here. And then system will send the, the patient the detail of the account, the password. So you can now log in. You can now give to you that you can now log in and do whatever that you need to do for him or her in, the, in your own pharmacy. Now, if you're coming from another place. And the email too for the patient as well. That's the essence of the email. So if you have their, if they, they put their email while creating that account, you can also use their email to recover the account by, by putting their email here and you can say it to send it to their email, their login, the, 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 the login detail to their medical folder. Any other question? Is there any other question? So, Mr. Collins, please, can you lead us in prayer? Hello? Yeah, Mr. Collins, I can hear you. You saw what? Can you lead us in prayer? Let's go. Father Lord, we thank you for this time. We thank you for this opportunity. We thank you for uh, this program. We pray that you give us the knowledge, give us the wisdom for we to understand this so that we can implement it in our various institutions to the benefit of everyone. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. So, Amen. good night, everyone. Amen. Good night. Yeah, good night. Good night. Thank, Thank you, Dr. Okoye. Good night, everybody. Good night. Thank you. Bye.